Hi, this screencast is going to show you how to use the photo editing application called GIMP. You've probably heard of the photo editing application by Adobe called Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop is used to edit and create all sorts of images. However, it can be very pricey for churches to use. But most of the key features of Photoshop are also available in GIMP. And the good news is that GIMP is totally free. The trade-off that you generally make with GIMP is that the user interface is not as easy and polished as Photoshop. However, with this screencast, we're going to help you navigate that user interface to use the basic tools in GIMP to create incredible images for your sermons, promotional material, and whatever else you need for your church. So we'll start by firing up the application. You're going to start by opening an image in the same way that you open it normally in other programs by going to File and down to Open and then double clicking on the image that you're wanting to edit. Now we've chosen this image from last year's Spring Family Day. I'm going to use it to promote this year's event. You can see it's just an average picture. You can see the camera person's shadow here and part of another girl right here we like the image so we're going to use some of the tools in GIMP, in GIMP to tweak it and make our little advertisement image we're going to do that by using the clone stamp tool clone stamp tool or the clone tool looks like a rubber stamp and you use it to copy one portion of the of the picture to another portion so go ahead and click the clone tool and then look below under the tool options. You can adjust how um, transparent it is with the opacity adjustments. And then you can click on different brushes and then the size, aspect ratio, angle, and several others. The only one that we're going to really need to, to deal with is the size. You begin using the clone stamp tool by selecting the portion of the image that you're going to be copying from or painting from. Now, since the grass over here is totally wide open and clear, and that's the same texture that the little girl is on, we're going to select this portion over here. In order to select the portion you're going to be copying from, first you're going to press the command key if you're using a Mac or the control key if you're using a PC. This is one of the interface oddities. Um, you're looking for the pointer to change into a plus, but that or a crosshair. That won't happen until you press that command key and then move the mouse just a little bit. When you do, it will turn into the crosshairs or the plus, and you will click to select the portion of the image that you're going to be copying from. Now that you have that selected, we're going to move over to the area of the image that we need to change and go ahead and use the clone stool tool to remove uh, the other little girl from the side of the image and clear open a spot for our text. See the clone tool does a great job with this removing the bucket and the shadow and every little bit that we need to deal with. Now you can see right here we are having a problem because we can't see it. We're going to zoom in by using the plus key so that we can get a better look at what we're doing. Now that we can see the foot a little bit better, I'm going to start editing it. However, we can see that this larger brush size is not going to really do the job for us. So we're going to need to change that size back down. Now that we've done that, we can slowly edit the rest of the foot out, being sure not to get any of the basket. Carry that texture up along the edge of the basket. We could spend a lot of time getting the cloning to look just right. When we zoom out of this image by using the minus key, we're going to see that it looks really good. And once there's text on top of it, you won't even be able to tell if there's been a clone tool used. Now it's time to crop the image and begin placing our text. To crop the image, we're going to use the Rectangle Select tool. 
going to click on the tool, click right up here at the very top of what we can use, and draw our rectangle, making sure to leave the girl's face and the eggs in the basket. Now, if you've been paying attention to MyCom, you know the rule of thirds. You know to always imagine a tic-tac-toe board and try to make your focal points match the parts where the lines cross on that tic-tac-toe board. So this is a rough estimation of that. Her face is one of those focal points, and we're going to go with that. Cropping is very simple. You simply go up to Image and down to Crop to Selection, and that will crop the image. Now that we have the image cropped, we're going to go ahead and place some text on the image using the text tool. The text tool is the black letter A in the toolbox. And when you click it, you can see all the typical tool options you would expect. We're going to use the ever popular Helvetica New. And the 200, 200 pixels is going to be about the right size. And we're going to use white instead of uh, black because that a darker color would not stand out very well against the dark green of the grass. To use the text tool, you begin by dragging a text box that will be about the size you expect to use. And when you release that mouse button, you're already selected in the text top box. You can just begin typing, and we're going to type our tagline, more than eggs. Now when we click in the layers, to the bottom layers to deselect that text box, we see that it's placed pretty well. It's about the right size that we want. However, the busyness of the background is interfering with the thinness of the font. So we want to deal with that by adding a drop shadow. Now to add a drop shadow, or to do any filters to text, you have to make sure the text is properly selected. The way we do that is by clicking on that text, then clicking on the rectangular select tool, clicking outside of the image until we see that box turn to yellow dashes. In order to get the drop shadow, I'm going to go to filters, light and shadow, and select drop shadow. Here in the drop shadow menu, you can see the offsets, which is the distance that the drop shadow will be from the text. The blur radius, which is how blurry the drop shadow will be. And the opacity, which is how clear or opaque the uh, drop shadow will be. We're going to use 10, 10, 15, and 80 for our drop shadow. And you can see that our drop shadow sets off the text quite nicely against that busy background. And though this is nice, if you wanted to use this for a slide background for something like a PowerPoint presentation, this is far too busy. However, it is nice to have the same sort of image across multiple different settings. If you were going to do a sermon series in correlation with this, uh, you might decide to transform this into a slide background. You can do that a couple of ways, but I think the best way for this image is to give it a nice blur. And to do that, we're going to um, we're going to go ahead and take off the text, and then we're going to select the background by selecting the background in the layers pane. Then we'll go to filters blur and Gaussian blur. Now we can see here the Gaussian blur options and it shows a live preview here. I think that the face is the best part of the body to get a gauge on how blurry an image like this is. We want it to be soft so there's no real detail showing through but not so soft that you can't tell what it is. And this uh, 30 pixel uh, blur radius is just what we are looking for. Now we can see the blurry image and if we put a bit of our text back on it we can see how clear that's going to make any sort of text that we need to use on this image for background. So we're going to go ahead and save this image as a background. 
course we want to save the image itself in the GIMP format. But after we've done that, to save it out for use in the, a slide background or uh, an online presence, we're going to, instead of save or save as, in GIMP, we're going to choose the export option. Now that we're in the export dialog box, we're going to go through all of the different file types and choose JPEG or PNG. I personally prefer the PNG format and then press export. We'll accept all of the defaults. And we'll be left with a high resolution image. The last basic tip we're going to give you is how to resize the image. Often, upload speeds can be a lot shorter than download speeds, and when you're trying to get these things online, it can be to your advantage to get them down to a much more manageable size. Uh, the best way to do that is to make the image actually smaller. The way you'll do that in GIMP is to go up to the image menu and down to scale image. And now in this one, you can see that we are at 1960 by 1304. And we're going to go ahead and change that. And we can just modify the top number. And that will change the bottom number as well. Because you can see these are linked. And they'll stay in the same proportion. You can't unlink them. But that will make the image um, look a little odd. So we're going to keep them linked. And we are going to change this top one to 800, which is a good, nice, crisp looking width to upload to places like Facebook and your website. Um, and yet, going to cut this down to a much smaller size. You can see when we do that, it automatically adjusts that bottom number. And all we have to do now to make the picture smaller is to click the scale button. And now the picture is at a reduced size. We can go ahead and zoom it up to make sure it still looks OK at this size. It does. Now all we have to do is repeat the steps for exporting the image. And we'll have an additional image at a smaller size to use online. That concludes the introduction to photo editing in GIMP. If you'd like to learn more communication tips for church leaders, go to www.umcom.org. Have a blessed day.